Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a voiceover slash walkthrough for this animated loop that I made in Critter. So first off I start out with a sketch. I wanted to animate my character swinging their legs on like a ledge slash bench. I had planned on making more of a background for this loop but in the end I cropped the canvas instead. So once I'm happy with my sketch I lower the opacity and make a new layer and this is where my rough animation is going to be. So I'll start out with drawing one leg using the sketch as a reference and I like to keep each of my animated sections on different layers so that way I can adjust the timing and maybe even delete things or clear the frame without removing other elements from the animation. I sketch the leg once and what I do is I copy the first frame across the timeline by right clicking and selecting copy to clipboard and then right clicking on the next frames and selecting paste from clipboard. And this will keep the drawings a bit more consistent. So to arrange the poses for this leg, I'll then use the selection tool and the transform tool to bend the leg from the knee and then at the ankle to get the right poses. Now, sometimes when I animate, my process is never entirely straightforward. Sometimes I'll go on a tangent or do something and try something different before I realize that there's a quicker way to do it. So on a new layer I sketched out the other leg and I started to do the same thing that I did for the first leg. I used the selection tool and transform tools to select and rotate it at the knee and then the ankle. But I then realised that I didn't have to do all that, I could simply animate one leg and then copy it later. So I decided to hide the first leg animation layer I'd done and I then added in some extra in-betweens to make the movement a bit smoother. I wanted the leg swing to be quite relaxed and maybe pause when they tilted the foot up at the top of the movement and then when the leg swung back I wanted it to pause a little more as well. So as you can see this is just me here adjusting the frames and adding in a couple of in-betweens just to get the movement right. It is super important when you make an animation to keep flipping through and playing it to see whether you like the timing. I then duplicated that layer and moved the frames along the timeline and then moved the last frame back to the beginning so it would be slightly offset from the other layer. Once that was done, I then moved each frame individually using the move tool to match the other leg's position on the sketch layer. So I decided the animation was a little fast and the legs weren't offset enough. So I added in some extra hold frames and moved the second leg along a little bit more in the timeline so I could then drag that end frame back to the beginning. So when I'm animating, I like to think of my animation as a jigsaw puzzle and it has several layers. So some elements will be above animations, some elements will be beneath. And I made a body, hair and eyes layer and I started sketching out the clothes on the body. And this would be my rough template for the rest of the animation. So the torso and the arms would remain still, but I then added in some robes that went over the top of the bench ledge that would then blow in the wind. I also decided to add a blink later on and I also wanted a little bit of wind to rustle the hair. Now when I finally got to sketching the head I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted my character to look and I wasn't too sure about the hairstyle either. So as you can see I went through quite a lot of changes with the styles and aside from a doodle in a notebook a few weeks ago this is really the first time that I've drawn this character. So I finally settled on this larger round eye and this hairstyle I thought I could do some nice little animation with the fringe elements uh, while the back hair which was tied up would stay the same. Once I was happy with the hair and the eyes and the robes and everything else in the sketch, I decided to add a few details and block out the bench. And then I moved on to the hair layer and started to animate it. I started off animating the hair in a blue, but when I turned the onion skin on, 
my previous and next frames were blue and red, so they didn't show up too well. So I'd recommend when you're not doing the lining and you're doing rough animation, you choose a color that is going to stand out between your onion skin layers. So I changed mine to this very bright green and I found it worked much better. Now this footage is actually from a live stream and I did most of the hair and robe animation along with the lining and coloring across two live streams. So if you're interested in coming along, I usually stream Saturdays from 2 p.m. UK time. If I have a lot of work to do during the week, I might do a surprise live stream. So I would definitely recommend hitting subscribe and the bell icon to be notified when I upload. Once I'd played it through and I was happy with the hair, I then moved on to the robe. Now, the robe was split into two sections. We have this longer area to the right of the canvas. Animating cloth and clothes is quite a challenge, but I tend to find it a lot easier if I split it up into sections and imagine it as individual blocked shapes. And I approach the cloth the same way that I did the hair, so there would be a slight movement and then it'd wiggle a little bit before it came back to the resting pose or the beginning frame that I made. If you're ever worried about your own process, just know that I go through several iterations of pretty much any animation that I do, because trying out new ways of animating and the different approaches you can take to a single movement is half the fun. So here I am starting on the smaller section of robe on the left side of the canvas. And like the motion of the legs, I didn't want either of these to be in time with each other. I imagined the breeze coming in from the right, hitting the longer piece of fabric and then hitting the smaller piece of fabric on the left. So I would need to offset these two animations and I can easily do that by selecting the frames in the layer by left clicking, holding shift and then clicking on the last frame in the layer and then just dragging them across the timeline. After that, I moved to the eye layer and started with the blinking animation and I used the open eye pose to copy across two frames. And then I drew a line across the center of the second frame to do a half open eye and then made a thicker line at the bottom of the eye on the third frame to do a closed position. And then I just erased what I didn't need. Once I was done with that, I tidied up the edges and I had the eye poses for my first blink. Now this is what the loop looks like so far and the eye blink I found was repeating a bit too regularly. So what I decided to do then was extend the loop. Now to do this I just highlighted the frames on each layer, copied to clipboard and then moved along the timeline and then pasted to clipboard. This meant the loop was now twice as long and I could space out the frames of the blink a little better. To keep everything organized, I grouped the line work layer and the sketch layer into their own folders in the layer panel. And you can just do this by selecting the layers, right clicking and creating a group from that menu. Lining your animation can be pretty difficult, especially if you have a shaky hand. Critter has a stabilizer option in the tool options panel, which you can get by going to settings, dockers and selecting tool options from the menu. In the brush smoothing, I choose stabilizer and I'll adjust the distance and delay depending on what I'm lining. So for smaller elements like the eyes, I'll choose a smaller delay and a smaller distance. And I might increase those options if I have to draw a longer, smoother line. Sometimes it's good to go in quite close and focus on one animated element, but you do want to bring yourself back so you can see the full canvas every now and then to see how it works with the rest of the animation. It is very easy to get yourself caught up in the details. As you can see, some of these frames are a different colour, and that is because I like to separate my original frames out from what are copies of the frames, especially if I'm working on loops or projects like this. To change the frame colour in Critter, you've just got to select them, right click and then choose the frame colour at the bottom of the window. 
Changing the frame colour also helps me know when the loop starts and stops. Especially if I want to extend the loop a little further as well, I can just copy the coloured frames. A lot of this is down to personal preference, so you can experiment with and see which tools and settings suit your animation workflow best. When I start lining, I'll make sure the rough animation layer is on a lower opacity so I can really focus on getting those lines nice and crisp. Sometimes my rough animation is what I need to go over, like the hair on the left side of the canvas, that was fine. Uh, but I decided that present me, lining me, knew better than when I was animating the roughs and changed it a little bit and that didn't work out. Some of the bits of hair needed to go back to the rough animation and I had to adjust those. But the hair closest to the ear, in the rough animation I'd added in a smaller section that once I'd finished lining didn't actually look great. So in the end I had to go through my lines and adjust that as well. Now when I was going through this animation sometimes the preview on Krissa would stop halfway or wouldn't render all the layers, it was a little bit annoying. To make sure a certain section played I just have to highlight or select that section and then hit play on the animation panel. Once the lining for the hair was done I then moved on to the legs and I lowered the opacity of the rough animation layer, made a new line layer and grouped those two together so it'd be nice and organised. And then I started to line the leg. This was the same process as the rough animation and I'd be using the selection tool and transform tool. I decided to add in a little bit of detail in the lining stage with a thicker band across the bottom of the foot for the sole and a band around the top of the shoe to make it look a little less flat. Now typically these details would be added in the rough animation layer but I decided that it was a good time to add it. It wasn't. It's much more difficult to keep details consistent in the lying stage than it is in the rough animation because when you're animating your roughs you're like checking it through, making sure it's all consistent and adding those details later on means you've got to do those checks again. Originally when I first started animating I would have redrawn every frame and I wouldn't have copied frames or moved them around because I used to see that as cheating. It's really not. If there is a quicker way to do something that will save you lots of time then do it. It will help your wrist from not feeling so tired when you're redrawing 100 frames. It will mean that you can spend more time on doing something else in the process like colouring or adding textures or little background animation elements that you might not have got the time to do beforehand. Now the difference between selecting and transforming the rough animation to selecting and transforming the leg line layers is that with the lines I had to make sure that when I moved them everything connected back up and it looked nice and neat. With the rough animation it doesn't really matter too much how neat it is. To be honest, this loop is quite neat for the rough animation. Usually my lines are a lot messier, but for this animation I wanted to make it nice and clear for anyone watching just what was going on. Lining this leg did take quite a while. I had to make sure that the lines looked nice. So once they were finished, it was time to copy them across that layer and then also duplicate that layer so then I could move each frame one by one to match the animation on the opposite leg. When I was moving the legs across it was very important that I zoomed in so I could match up those legs to the onion skin and the previous and next frames so we, there wouldn't be too much of a wobble. Unlike TB Paint I don't believe there is a way to move multiple frames to the same location one after the other so it had to all be done by hand. And this is what the lined hair and legs looked like. And then it was time to move on to lining the robes. So the robes on the right of the canvas would need to be above the leg animation layer. 
and unlike the roughs I didn't want to completely copy the rough animation layer I didn't want all the lines to go straight up to the top once the longer robe was finished I then made a new line layer for the smaller robe lower the opacity of the rough animation and started on the lining I didn't want to include too many harsh lines in the animation of the robe and gradually went through to finish off the line work. Once all the main animation elements were finished, I started on the static elements, outlining the head and the ear. The robes came next and although these were static points, there were several sections to them. The arm on the right side of the canvas would need to be above the main torso, while the arm on the left side of the canvas would need to be beneath the torso, beneath the legs and beneath the robe animation layers as well. Now here I am just sorting out the second section of robes that would cover the top of the legs. Now that the lining was finished it was time for the colouring and this meant hiding the rough animation layers and creating a new colour layer beneath the line work. I would then use a filled, non-textured round brush to outline each section and then use the fill tool to fill that area. I like to have my colour layers separate to my line work. This just means that I can change the colour of the line work layer without interfering with the colour layer. This does take quite a lot of time and I am hopeful that Krita will eventually add in something similar to TV Paint that will allow you to automatically reference a layer above and colour those layers like that. Now once again I had hoped to duplicate my colour layer for the leg and then move it across but I found that there were quite a few gaps and bits that would need to be filled in anyway so I decided to do it by hand. This did take a little bit more time but that meant that there were less errors when I eventually finished. If I couldn't see certain areas to colour, I would just have to hide or lower the opacity of previous layers to see through. Once I'd finished with the main colours, I could then go through and check to make sure that everything was okay and I hadn't missed any bits. There did need to be some alteration on certain layers for the hair to cover up a small patch of skin. After I've done the line art and colour, I will add texture to my animation. Now to do this I added three layers above, one was purple, the other was yellow and then I added a warm pink. Using a textured brush I added those colours over the top of my drawing and changed the blending modes until I found something that I liked and then adjusted the opacity until I was happy with the result. And this was the final look. I really hope you enjoyed this little voiceover walkthrough for this animation. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or video requests and I'll add them to my list. As always, if you want to see more animations and tutorials from me, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I post and I'll be back with another video real soon. Bye!